As we briefly went over in the past couple of videos, cells are extremely complex forms of life and have countless substructures that fulfill distinct roles in the cell. So the goal of this video is going to be to acknowledge some of the structure that you will often see in even unicellular organisms. So on the screen right now is an image of an amoeba. One thing on the cell that is different compared to the normal cell images that you'll see on the internet is that this cell is not very spherical. You can see these projections coming off the central body almost as though they are limbs. These projections are known as pseudopodia, and ironically, it means false foot, as the suffix pod comes from the same root as podiatry, which means foot. The main purpose of these pseudopods is to act quite literally as a limb for the cell, just like we inferred it looked like. So the amoeba can use its pseudopodia to either move around or even to attack something it wants to engulf. The interesting thing about this structure is that while we focus on the abilities of the structure as a whole, we should also acknowledge the vast variety of microstructures that must be within the structure. Considering the purpose of the pseudopod, the microstructures inside have to be able to extend and contract when necessary to provide mobility. So the key realization here is that sometimes we just imagine that cells are simply these bags of fluid with a couple things floating around, but they're actually these incomprehensibly complex structures. They're so complex, in fact, that even biologists today don't fully understand how everything works and are still studying how some structures actually come to be. Another structure that you'll often see associated with unicellular organisms that either help them move around or even help move other things around are cilia. So this is an organism known as Oxytrichia trifilax, which is a unicellular organism and a eukaryotic cell. So the cilia are quite visible on the cell as they are the hair-like structures outside the cellular membrane. Even though this cell is unicellular, it's a pretty large cell. It's slightly over 100 micrometers in length, so still very small at a human scale, but large on the cellular scale. So these cilia move relatively in unison to either allow the organism to move around, or sometimes to move other things that are brushing the surface of the cell around. A good example for this is the epithelial cells in your lungs. They are covered in cilia in order to move things up and down, such as saliva and other particles that end up in the lungs. Normally, the cilia will move laterally, longitudinally, or in a circular motion to provide locomotion. So this cell, Oxytrichia trifilax, is particularly interesting as a eukaryote because it doesn't have just one nucleus. It can often have two nuclei, and within these nuclei, the DNA of the cell can often be extremely fragmented. Most cells in biological systems have a reasonable number of chromosomes. For example, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, which is actually a fairly large number compared to most other cells. But Oxytrichia trifilax crushes that number and can sometimes have thousands of chromosomes. Aside from cilia and pseudopodia, one other method of locomotion is that some cells will just have one larger tail-like extension that can be whipped around to move which is known as a flagellum. Bacteria and archaea cells most commonly have flagella as their method of locomotion. For example, on the screen we can see an image of salmonella. We can very clearly see the long whip-like tail structures that protrude from the cells. Even compared to the cells themselves, the flagella are relatively thin. For comparison, the thickness of one flagellum is roughly a quarter of a micrometer. So 4,000 flagella side by side will create the weight of a millimeter. Since prokaryotic cells, such as bacteria, are smaller cells, the flagellum has about a quarter the thickness of the cell itself. But once again, it's really amazing how all the pseudopodia, cilia, and flagella are so tiny and seem like simple structures, but there are innumerable varieties of microstructures that play behind the scenes of these vital structures. There are entire studies that go into extreme depth on everything that goes on in the movement of these outer structures, and it turns out to be extremely difficult to wrap your head around because of all the biological machinery that we still don't fully understand. So while this video mainly focused on structures outside of the cell, the next couple of videos will focus on interior structures within the cytoplasm. Very soon there will also be more fields of science on the channel to add some variety. But for now, 
I thank you all for watching.